Okay. So this is a uh, tutorial on how to make a, uh, a look at uh, constraint um, on an object that you only want to look at another object on a single axis. So a single axis look at constraint. As far as I know, Max doesn't have an easy way of doing this. Um, but to illustrate a finished product, uh, so it can look at an object on the same axis, it also just continues to look at it from there. Also, it can be moving, and it's always just looking at that object on a single axis, uh, no matter how either object is moved. Okay, so let me go ahead and create a new scene and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make this. I'm going to start off by creating just a plane, but of course it doesn't have to be a plane, it can be just a null object, but the plane in this case um, definitely illustrates the uh, illustrates the tool and this is going to act as the root so we're just going to call this the root the uh, object root okay now the object that actually does the uh, turning We're going to call that the uh, rotating object. And we're going to parent that to the object group. I'm just going to create a basic pyramid object. It's always going to look at the, it's going to illustrate that it's always looking at the object, but of course, you know, this isn't a necessary part of this. Parent that to that, so now we can see where it's pointing. And go ahead and create a dummy to represent the object. But of course, this can be a, a mesh, whatever. It's just going to be looking at its center pivot of whatever object you have. But I'm just going to have a nice little dummy here to illustrate that object, to represent that object. I'm just going to call it the look at object. Okay. So the trick on this is to create a position controller, a script a float uh, script controller for just a single axis. And now we want that to be rotating around at Z, so it's we want that Z axis to be spinning. So let's go ahead and create a float script. There we go. I'm going to create a couple variables. We need a local space object because it needs to make some calculations based off the local space of this rotating object. We're actually going to have to create that object. We'll do that in a minute. Let's finish creating our variables. We also need a look at object. Okay. Now I'm going to create another dummy. I'm also going to parent that to the root. And this is going to be your local space object. Now the reason I'm making a multiple object for this uh, is because 
um, scripts and other controllers don't us, don't like it when you've got things that are dependent on one another inside a hierarchy to uh, make calculations off each other. So I don't want that local space object that's going to define the local space of this of this area. However, it's however it's turned and wherever it is, uh, I don't want it to be a parent because then this object's rotation is having to be based off of something that's already sending in information. So sometimes it's allowed to happen in Max, and I admit that I don't know uh, as much as I should about the, uh, the problems and uh, uh, requirements of some parental hierarchies, but I just play it safe and I create a separate object. doesn't really matter, it's just one more little dummy in the same. Okay, so let's link these up. I'm going to assign node to the local space object. There we go. We look at object. We're just going to make that. So now they're all linked up. Now I can just make some math. So the trick to this one is the ATAN2 uh, script or a uh, function. using something I haven't uh, created yet, just this local position concept. So the idea is this will do a good job of looking at the local of the x and the y, and the reasons it's x and y is because the z is the rotation. So we need the uh, we need the x and the y to, to read what the x and the y is of this object in the local space. So let's retrieve the local space. You can calculate this by using the in coordinate system. The local space object, that's the, uh, we're working inside the local space of the uh, local space object. There we go. So now we have the uh, we retrieve the local position of this object, of the local space object, in comparison to the uh, 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 local space of the local space object. Or, yeah, I think I just messed those up, but you know what I mean. Um, got the local position. There we go. And then this will turn this uh, into radians, so we don't want that. We want to turn it into uh, uh, into degrees, or I'm sorry, it turns it into degrees, and we want to turn it into radians. Uh, so we're going to divide by 180 and multiply by pi. And this won't set it up exactly right. This sets up it a little bit off. The reason why I haven't put this in yet because there's a lot of factors that that depends on. Um, so at this point, if you plugged it in and things are a little bit off, that's when you just add an additional little subtraction to go ahead and just get it back on path. On path. So right now it's 180 degrees off, so we just multiply or uh, subtract by 180. Evaluate it, and bam, it works. So I can go ahead and move it. And it's always looking at that object, no matter where it is, and no matter how this is rotated, it's always looking at that object inside its own local space. All right. So yeah, just to eyeball everything again. There's that controller, little script controller, that's been placed on top of the rotating object. And one more look at all of our uh, at our hierarchy right here. Okay. Uh, 
Now there are most likely other ways to do, do this that does, that's more efficient. Script controllers are slow, so depending on the uh, amount of stuff in your scene, you might find it not, up, uh, not updating as you uh, uh, scrub through your uh, uh, timeline. Um, it is now, but uh, sometimes, sometimes you can find that uh, script controllers can be a little bit slow and it can, it can not give you the best update while just moving around inside your viewport. Um, so if anybody has a, a better way to set up something like this, uh, instead of using a script controller, maybe using an expression or a wire parameters or something like that, uh, then that's awesome. Uh, just let me know uh, in the comments below. Um, otherwise, this works just fine. And of course, the nice thing about script controllers is I can, you know, change the names of my different objects, and it just updates the variables instead of using something like, you know, instead of using something like, instead of doing this, actually using in code the whole. You know, I avoided doing that because, of course, you never know what your object is going to be called and if you want to change the name of it or anything like that. But, um, yeah, there you have it.